The special ten sahaba radiyallahu anhum 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 الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله ديوي وزمدني شانا we welcome you back once again to our very special program, The Special Ten, in which we are going to be continuing our discussion with regards to those ten blessed individuals, those ten special individuals who received the glad tidings of paradise in this very world from the tongue of our beloved Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Particularly, as we had started the discussion with regards to the blessed life of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajhahu al Kareem a couple of episodes ago, we will be continuing with regards to uh, the blessed life of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajhahu al Kareem But before that, let's listen to a blessing of reciting salawat and salam and salutations upon the beloved Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet of Rahmah, the intercessor of Ummah, the owner of Jannah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam has stated, the one who sends salat upon me one time, Allah azza wa jal will shower mercy upon him ten times. Subhanallah azza wa jal sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam salatu wa salaman alayka ya Rasulullah. Today, insha'Allah, we will briefly look at the hijrah, the migration of Sayyidina Ali Karram Allahu Ta'ala wa Jahahu Al-Kareem and the benefit of having love for him. So the migration of Sayyidina Ali radiallahu an and love for him. Firstly, if we look at the hijrah and the migration of Sayyidina Ali Karram Allahu Ta'ala wa Jahahu Al-Kareem, we come to realize that our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam after he was commanded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to spread this religion of Islam, we see in the life of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam that first he preached Islam secretly. He did not preach it openly, but there, were, there was a specific gathering of believers who would go and they would learn and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Wasallam would preach to them in this manner. But it wasn't open. Now, as time progressed as time went on, the preaching of Islam was done openly. So the Prophet ﷺ started to preach Islam openly along with his companions And even when Islam was not preached openly, but if the disbelievers at that time were to discover that so and so a person has become a Muslim, then that person would undergo a lot of torture and there are a lot of mistreatment, sometimes by his own relatives and sometimes by, uh, if they were for example slaves, but then by their owners and masters at that time. So this was the situation that Muslims were being oppressed and especially after the Prophet started to preach Islam openly, the oppression increased upon the Muslims and even the Prophet himself had threats life uh, threats you could say for example you know there were many times where there was a plan to Allah murder the prophet sallallahu alaihi wa sallam but our nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam was under the protection of allah azza wa jal so one such plan that is narrated by the scholars in the books of sira is that the disbelievers they had a meeting and at that time, they were deciding what to do with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam since his religion is spreading so fast, and people are starting to accept him. 
many gave their own suggestions like Mahadala so and so should go and kill him, so and so should go and kill him and eventually it was decided and even the shaitan came in the form of an old man who then approved this 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 suggestion which was proposed by Abu Jahl and he said that each and every person we should get one youngster one person from various tribes and then they go and Ma'ad Allah try to kill the Prophet ﷺ so then no not one person no one tribe or one person can be blamed and the shaitan he advised them saying look I like this plan this is a good plan so they went and tried to implement that so now our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he has been commanded to migrate to Madinatul Munawwara so he's been commanded to go and do hijrah and migrate towards Al Madinatul Munawwara and he has because even before his announcement of his prophethood his character was such that he was sadiq and he was ameen he was truthful and he was honest and trustworthy so the people would entrust things to him people would give them things to look after for them until they uh, asked for it back at the, until the time came for him to give it back to them so he still had some things entrusted to him sallallahu alaihi wa sallam so what happened is when he is about to migrate to madinatul munawwara he says to sayyidina ali karam allah ta'ala wajhahu al kareem that I have been commanded by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to migrate so I am leaving for Medina tonight you rest at my bed wearing my green cloak or green shawl over you and go to sleep you will not have any difficulty you will not have any calamity befit you you will not have any difficulties and after returning the things that the Quraysh had entrusted to me, had given to me as amanat after giving those things back to their rightful owners then come to Madinatul Munawwara as well Subhanallah Azzawajal just think about this for a moment Sina Ali Karram Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem knows as well that this is a very dangerous time in the sense that he knows the disbelievers are planning on attacking the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they are Ma'adallah planning on killing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so that very bed is the center of the attack where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would bless that bed and rest upon it Sayyidina Ali Karram Allah Ta'ala Wajhahu Al Kareem despite knowing this he says yes I will sleep where our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sleeps he has been commanded to sleep there why one of the reasons is this sentence of the Prophet ﷺ that no calamity, no pain, no problem should befall you and after returning these entrusted things to their rightful owners you also come and join us in Madinatul Munawwara you also come to Medina Subhanallah so just that sentence he radiallahu and this was his belief, this was his trust in the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he has told me that nothing will happen to me I will not face any problems so for this reason he radiallahu ta'ala an went to sleep and to the extent that he narrates that I slept peacefully the entire night because it was his belief that the, whatever the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said it is true and it is going to be taking place meaning I will not have any harm come to me he says that the next morning when I woke up and I started to return these entrusted things to their rightful owners and I spent three days in Makkah al-Mukarrama without hiding from anyone, without hiding myself from anyone and then I, after having returned all of these belongings to their rightful owners, I set off for al Madinatul al-Munawwara Subhanallah, so he says on the way nobody came to me, nobody tried, nobody harmed me on the way as well and then I reached Quba where the Prophet وسلم, was residing in, at a particular place and I went and I stayed there as well Subhanallah Azawajal so this was a brief look at the migration of Sayyidina Ali Karram Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem we've already looked at what a great status Sayyidina Ali Karram Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem possesses in terms of the 
a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in terms of the ayat of the Quran, which were revealed, which uh, the commentators and the mufassirin have stated that this, uh, these ayat, these verses refer to Sayyidina Ali, karam Allahu taala wajhul karim. We heard that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Ana Madina tul ilmi wa Ali yumbabuha," that I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. O Anadarul Hikmati wa Ali Yumbabuha, that I am the house of wisdom and Ali is his door. Now, if you look at our the importance of love for Sayyidina Ali, Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem, he radiallahu an himself says that two kinds of people will be devastated on accounts of me. The one crossing the limits in intense devotion, intense love to me will add those characteristics to me that I don't possess. So this is going extreme in the love of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem to the extent that Ma'ad Allah declaring him even greater than the Shaykhain, the first two Khalifas after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sayyidina Bakr Siddiq Radiallahu Ta'ala An and Sayyidina Umar Ibn Khattab Radiallahu Ta'ala An. And he says, this is the first type who will go extreme in love. And second ones, the ones bearing grudges against me will provoke them to slander me. So these are the two types of people. And with reference to the above mentioned hadith, the renowned commentator of the Quran, Hakim al-Ummah, Shaykh Mufti Ahmad Yar Khan Naimi rahimahullah ta'ala has stated, Love for Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajhul Kareem is the kernel of faith. However, it is terrible to cross the limit in love. But grudge against Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajhul Kareem is really haram, absolutely forbidden, and sometimes it is even kufr, disbelief. Allahu Akbar. If we look at, for example, the love for Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem and the blessings of having love for Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem a beautiful story has been narrated and mentioned by the scholars that once there was a person named Abu Ja'far from Kufa who was fair to everyone in his dealings in particular he would accept the lowest price paid by anyone from amongst the progeny, the family, the lineage of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem. Or he would not charge them and he would record the amount as a debt to Sayyidina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem. So he would accept the lowest price by the progeny of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem or he would record it as a debt in the name of Sayyidina Ali once he was sitting by the door of his house, a man who was going past, he taunted and in a mocking way, in a taunting way, he made these remarks that has your big debtor, meaning Sayyidina Ali, has your big debtor settled the debt with you or not? Allahu Akbar. So has he settled the debt yet or not? And this person, because he was a true lover of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Ta'ala Wajahul Kareem and the family and the descendants of Sayyidina Ali Karam Allah Wajahul Kareem, that he was greatly shocked by this taunt that was hurled at him, that were made by this individual. So when he slept at night, he was blessed with the vision of the great Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alihi Wa Alihi Wasallam, along with Hasnaini Karimain, the two grandsons grandsons of our Nabi Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The Noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam asked his grandsons about their father Sayyidina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem. And Sayyidina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem replied from behind saying, O Prophet, I am present here. Subhanallah. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam inquired and he asked, why do you not fulfill his right? He radiallahu an replied, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, I have already brought the money 
with me. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, hand it over to him. So Sayyidina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala wa Shahul Kareem handed over a woolen pouch full of money to the person and said, it is your due. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to the person, receive it and do not refuse anyone from his progeny who comes and asks you for loan. From now onwards, you will never suffer poverty, destitution or deprivation. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. So when this person, he woke up, he actually found that very woolen pouch in his hand. So now in a state of disbelief, he called his wife and he says to her, tell me if I'm asleep or if I'm awake. In, in other words, when we find something to be unbelievable, we say, is this, is this real? Am I dreaming? So likewise, he was saying to his wife, tell me, am I asleep or am I awake? So she says to him that you are fully awake. And he became so jubilant and so happy over this and related this whole story to his wife. And when he checked his list of debtors that he had, he found that there was not a single penny of debt mentioned in the name of Sayyidina Ali. Meaning all the debts, the records that he had made of all the debts in the list, they were paid off. Subhanallah These are the blessings of having love for Sayyidina Ali and his blessed progeny. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love for him. Ameen. Sallu al Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa salam alayka ya Rasulullah. But, my dear Islam brothers, we have to keep in mind that the love of Sina Ali Karam Allahu Ta'ala Wajhahul Kareem comes with a few requirements of its own. Meaning, Sina Amir al-Mu'mineen radiallahu an himself has stated that after the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma are better than all. And then he further added, لا يجتمع حبي وبغض أبي بكر وعمر في قلب مؤمن. That love for me and hatred for Sina Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله عنه أو عمر رضي الله تعالى عنه. It cannot gather in the heart of any true believer. So love for me, hatred against Sina Abu Bakr Siddiq رضي الله عنه أو Sina Umar رضي الله تعالى عنه cannot gather in the heart of a Believer in the heart of a mu'min. Subhanallah Azza wa Jal. Sayyidina Shaykh Abu Muhammad Abdullah Muhtadi alayhi rahmatullahi al-Qabi has narrated that Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, I was privileged to perform Hajj. In the Haram al Kaaba, I was informed about a person, he didn't drink water. So I was very surprised and I went to see him uh, to ask for the reason for why he did not drink water, why he didn't need to drink water. And he said, I am from Hilla, a city in the central, in central Iraq. And I once dreamt of a horrific scene. And I found myself exhausted due to intense thirst. Somehow, I managed to get to the Hawdi, Kawthar, the pond of Kawthar. The pond of Kawthar of the most beloved Nabi, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Wasallam. And he says, I found Sina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an, Sina Umar Farooq radiallahu an, and Sina Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala an, and Sina Ali Karam Allahu ta'ala wajhahul kareem present there. All of these respected great personalities were distributing water to the people. So he says, I moved towards Sina Ali Karam Allahu ta'ala wajhahul kareem. Because I held him high in high esteem and would consider him superior to the rest of the three caliphs of Islam. To my surprise, he radiallahu ta'ala an turned away from me. I was very thirsty, so I went to the rest of the three caliphs one by one and each of them ignored me, meaning turned their blessed faces away from me. Allahu Akbar. So in the meantime, I came to the merciful Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I came across him and I came near him and complained 
that Mawla Ali turned his face away from me and did not make me drink water. Allahu Akbar. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, how can they give you water? You bear grudges against my companions. Allahu Akbar. He says, having heard this, I felt absolutely sure that I held an incorrect belief. Out of remorse and regret, I repented sincerely before the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And the Blessed, the Beloved and the Blessed Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam gave me a bowl of water which I drank and then I woke up. Alhamdulillah Azza wa Jal, I don't feel thirsty ever since I had that bowl of water from the blessed hands of the merciful Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, after this dream, I also advised my family members to repent from their corrupt and wrong beliefs. So some of them did and some of them did not. Now, Alhamdulillah, it is concluded from this foregoing parable. And also, this is just one incident and parable, but there are many proofs that our scholars have also presented with regards to the greatness of the Shaykhain and Sayyidina Uthman Ghani radiallahu an over Sayyidina Ali karam Allahu ta'ala wa jahul kareem in terms of their status. Otherwise, each and every one of these is a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa like the rest of the companions. And no matter how big a person is, a saint is in this world, no matter how high a status he attains, he cannot obtain the rank of Sahabiyat being a companion of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. But we learn from this incident and this parable that the criteria of being a true Muslim is that he bears heartfelt reverence for all the blessed companions Ridwanullahi Ta'ala Alihim Ajma'in. All the blessed companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam. And if a person has respect for some of them, but hatred Allah, for some of the other companions Alayhim Ridwan, then he is seriously mistaken. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love and devotion for the blessed companions of our beloved Nabi sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the neighborhood of our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and his four companions in Jannatul Firdaus. So my dear Islam brothers, this is the aqidah and the beliefs of the Ahl Sunnah that in terms of greatness and in terms of status the greatest of all companions, the greatest after the Nabi, after the Anbiya Kiram alayhi salatu wasalam, after the Prophets alayhi salatu wasalam, the greatest is Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an. And then Sayyiduna Umar Farooq radiyallahu ta'ala an. And then Sayyiduna Uthman Ghani radiyallahu ta'ala an. And then Sayyiduna Mawla Ali karram allahu ta'ala wajhahul kareem. As mentioned by Sadr Sharia, Badr al Tariqa, Allama Mawlana Mufti Muhammad Amjad Ali Azmi Rahmahullah Ta'ala, that the order with respect to the superiority and ranking according to the doctrine and the aqidah and the creed of the Ahl Sunnah, Wal Jama'ah, the true school of thought, that all the companions of the Holy Prophet, وسلم, whether seemingly they be superior or the other case, but in reality, none of the companions alayhim radwan are inferior. None of them is inferior. So our belief is that all the companions alayhim radwan are destined for paradise. After the prophets and messengers, Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an, then Umar Farooq Azam radiallahu an, then Uthman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala an, and then Sayyidina Ali karramallahu ta'ala wajhahul kareem they are superior in that order to all the creatures of Allah azza wa the order that we've mentioned they exactly their status is, is in that order so greatest from amongst the all all of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be it humans or jinns so the greatest after the prophets and the messengers are these companions so whomsoever considers Sayyidina Ali Karramallahu ta'ala wajhul kareem as superior to Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu an O Farooq Azam radiallahu ta'ala an is a disbeliever having corrupt beliefs 
Allah Akbar. The superiority of rank after the above mentioned four righteous caliphs, the Khalifas of Islam, is for the remaining members of the Ashara Mubashara, the special ten companions that we are discussing in this program of ours. Followed by the Hassanayn Karimain, Sina Hassan radiallahu an and Sina Hussein radiallahu ta'ala an, and then the Ashabi Badr. Ashabi Badr are those companions who fought in the uh, Battle of Badr, Ashabi Bayati Ridwan, and all these are absolutely Jannati guaranteed to enter paradise. Superior here means being more respectable and honorable in the court of Allah. The same also stands for bearing abundant rewards. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us true love and devotion for the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us steadfastness upon the aqeedah, the creed and the belief of the Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ameen bijahin nabil ameen sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala ala muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The special ten sahaba radiyallahu anhum the special ten sahaba radiyallahu anhum the special ten sahaba radiyallahu anhum the special ten sahaba radiyallahu anhum